Hello and welcome to a statue review of the Espresso EST Rumuru Tempest Effects and Motions statue. That was a bit of a mouthful. So today we've got a um, we've got a company or rather a subdivision of Bandai that I've never really opened anything of before, and that is Espresso. I don't know what exactly they're like. This is my first Espresso one. I don't know what EST means either. Part of me thinks maybe this is a slime-related uh, statue series. I do not know. I didn't really look that up because I don't plan these things very well. But yeah, so obviously today we have a statue of Rimuru Tempest uh, in in his really cool kind of dynamic pose. We'll have a look at the box in a second. But as you can see here, it does say so. For some reason, it says Tempest uh, effects and motion, but. There in uh, Katakana, it does say Rumuru Tempesto. So, uh, you know, we do know it's him. And it's number one, because I think maybe they have, like, a unpainted version as well. So that's that's a look at the statue overall. That is a look at the back of him, and that is kind of a look at a bit of the effects and stuff. And to be honest, that is kind of what sold me on this. The effects and everything look really cool, I think. I think that's the logo of the series, right? The uh, That time I was reincarnated as a slime. And that's the bottom. Oh, oh, it's Banpresto. Okay, cool. So, Espresso is Banpresto, but I guess maybe Tempest Espresso. I don't fully get it. Anyway, I'm going to go open this up now and I'll show you guys what's inside. Okay, so for those of you wondering, uh, it does come actually in two bags, which is quite interesting. So uh, the first bag obviously has Rimuru himself uh, fully intact, I do believe, apart from uh, one arm. Wait, no, his arm is there. No, it's he's all there. Uh, so on the sword and the base comes in one, and then the effect parts come in another, which is quite interesting. So um, anyway, I'm going to go and assemble these now, and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. I've assembled him. Uh, this kind of took the longest. I've taken quite a while to assemble a statue, really, but that's because of all the extra parts, which is understandable. So, as is tradition, we are now going to take a look at Rumuru Tempest Espresso Est. Um, so, first up, we have the base. The base is quite nice. It uh, obviously looks a bit like a rocky outcrop or whatever. Uh, it is hollow underneath, as you'd expect, really. I mean, this isn't going to be a big hunk of plastic. It is quite quite thin as well. Uh, but, I mean, it does the job, really. It's, it's an interesting base as well. I quite like it because it's not just like a flat square or a triangle or something. It is actually something kind of cool. So we'll take a look at the effect part next. So he's got four effect parts and each of them have different colours. I'm I'm struggling to think if there's a reasoning behind the different colours. I don't think it is. I know obviously some of it's meant to represent he's maybe turning from slime into human form or maybe he's using like a power or whatever. But we got this one that attaches the base. This is the easiest one. This really just slots in. There's no issue. Uh, so we'll take this side then. So each of these parts, if and when you do get this statue, do keep in mind, uh, you know, that they have to attach in a very specific way and a certain angle. So this one attaches to his knee, as you can see there. But, I mean, from a distance, you can't really see it's hooked into the knee, especially because part of it covers the joint. If that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, we got a nice little, um, you know, kind of flourish of his cloak here. Kind of, you know, reaching out and in. And then round here is uh, an interesting one. This is kind of like a black, not as black as this one, but still a very dark blue bit of energy. So that's kind of going round. Those are his boots as well. I do like that it is in keeping with the style as well. His feet are a little bit like big if that makes sense like in the anime his his boots are very thin but you know and has the ruffles there so you see a bit of his trousers underneath as well um yeah so that reaches round here um and kind of intertwines a little bit with the katana he's holding now 
The katana is a bit of a weird one, because if I get the box quickly... Uh, if we see here, his hand is actually further down the katana in the um, box promo image. But here, and I've tried, I don't think you can move this. I'm pretty sure it's moulded together. Or it, maybe the katana is like held on by, a, you know, like a, a port. But either way, you're not getting it further down. So it does make sense because if we go look at the front briefly we'll see that you can see a lot of the um, of the hilt of the katana there but on my version you don't really at the same angle like you see a little bit but his is more pronounced that's more like there but you have to turn him at a more extreme angle to get that but again i mean prototypes and the final product are likely to change a bit but this is the most like noticeable one so far you've had but you know, it, it's a cool katana, um, it's detailed, it, it's about as detailed as you'd expect for the price point and stuff. So we've got the little tassel here, obviously you can bend her a little bit, I'm sure with a bit of force you can make it bend a little bit more. But I mean, it looks, it looks as bendy as you'd want it really, you wouldn't want it much more. And yeah, we've got some, um, some kind of like tassel-y kind of things that make it look like it's in motion, which is very nice. I do like the interaction between this and like wrapping round. It's a little frustrating because um, this arm, I had a little bit of trouble porting in. It fell out twice and like when I was putting this on, I had to take the arm out. So just making it impossible. Also, I forgot to say, sorry, this port onto um, his like boot, his leg there. Um, it's a little bit of a frustrating one to put in, but you know, it's not too bad. And then we have his free hand up here. So he's clearly doing something here. He's sort of uh, preparing a spell of some kind, I think, or uh, or something's going on because he's got a lot of energy going around him. Now, this was the most frustrating one to put on because it pegs into his arm there. But it's at like a weird slash angle. You've got to like push it in right and move it round and... That was a little bit frustrating, but we've got his uh, his open hand there, and one of my favourite parts of this statue actually is the scarf. The scarf looks pretty cool. Um, you know, it, it looks in a nice motion and stuff. It's got all the texturing you'd need as well. And then we are on to the face, which the face I think looks really good. Really, um, again, I mean, it is a lower price point, so it's not going to be you know on level with the higher higher statues but I still think that is pretty nice and then we end with the hair the hair I quite like it looks it looks a little bit awkward I don't know why I think it's just the like the fringe there looks so solid that like when it starts tapering out it looks a little bit like a secondary piece like, I don't know, it, it looks a little bit clumsy. Maybe more hair should have swept over or something. I don't fully know. But, I mean, you know, it, it's a pretty good job. It's, again, it's, you know, the low price point statue hair. But there's more... Oh, dear God. Okay, the uh, the balance on this is a little bit off as well. So I'm going to go, go redo this in a second. That's going to be fun. Um, but, yeah, so that about wraps up a look at him. So... Now I'm going to go take some photos uh, from various angles just to kind of show you guys the more intricate details and stuff of it and then we will give a wrap up and review or whatever so uh, stick around for that. I'll see you after the montage. Alright, we are back. So it's time to give a conclusion on the Rumuru Tempest Effect and Motions statue by Espresso. So having had a bit more time with it and kind of, you know, mess around with it a little bit to kind of get angles and stuff of for the photos, I've got to say this kind of ranks a little bit low for me. Um, I really like Rumuru as a character. I've always kind of wanted a statue because... 
One thing I kind of like about that time I was reincarnated as a slime is the kind of over-the-top action and stuff that happens, and Rimuru obviously is an overpowered character. Um, so I, I kind of like him for that, and I've, I've seen a few statues in the past who've never been like, eh, it doesn't quite fit. But this, I thought, was the perfect representation of his character, really. You know, he's full of power and stuff, and he's ready to battle. However... I don't know, there's just something about the statue that's kind of average, I guess. Um, I mean, the statue itself, the effects and stuff on the court, you know, they're, they're fine, as I say, like, I, I quite like the scarf and the whole, like, you know, both parts of it are kind of in motion, along with his hair and stuff like that. I think, to be honest, one thing that does leave it down is these things. I, I, so I've never been super crazy on statues that have things like this and I think maybe what kind of just doesn't click with me great is that they're all different colours. If they were all like this, the kind of dark blue kind of energy stuff, I think I'd enjoy it more, if that makes sense. It would make look more uniform. But like, one's black, one's white, one's dark blue, one's like deep purple or whatever and I don't know it just doesn't quite work it looks a bit too busy and as if nothing everything's going on and nothing's going on at the same time if that makes sense it's really hard to tell exactly you know what's going on also I was mildly bothered just by the fact that the the, the promo shot showed his hand a little bit different which made the pose a little bit cooler, but now you've really got to um, angle him correctly to really get the kind of hilt and thing. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I like the base. I, I don't dislike the statue overall, but I think it's, it's fine. Um, I don't know, maybe, admittedly, the slime anime isn't like in my top 10 or whatever, I like Rumoru as a character. I like the anime. I've seen season one. I need to see season two. But, eh, yeah, I don't know. It's This isn't really as high as the other Ban Presto figures I've opened. Honestly, even the fairly basic ones, like the um, Izuku Midoriya one from My Hero Academia, I'd put that above this. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if anyone owns this. I don't know, let me know if maybe yours was different or something, maybe I just got a bit of a dud one. Or, you know, let me know what the other Espresso uh, statues for slime anime characters are. I was going to get a couple others, I'm probably not going to now, to be honest. I mean, this is a certainly a kind of cool display piece. As I say, I really like the base. I like the pose, and it's just, meh, the rest of it is fine. Um, but yeah, that about wraps it up for my review. Really, I'll leave a playlist for other statues as well, because I have opened a lot of, uh, especially Ban Presto, I've opened more of them than anything else. So take a look at that if you're interested, and I'll leave a mystery video at the bottom. And um, yeah, that about wraps it up. Uh, fear not, I have several more statues uh, in the works. There's at least four more. So that's something to look forward to in the future. And that's it. So until next time, goodbye.